Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We're here in Lincolnshire at Napier Turbochargers. Now, we're going to find out exactly what components are actually made in a turbocharger uh, with using Grob machine tools. Mark, well, absolutely fantastic show this is going to be. We've got the privilege to be here at Napier Turbochargers and looking at some of these massive uh, turbochargers and looking at some of the internal components that make up this turbocharger, the, the Blisk, which is made out of Inconel, and the impellers that are made on the Grob machine, and, and, and the cycle time savings are, are astronomical. It's going to be a fantastic show. So here we have it, a fully assembled turbocharger. You know, this is going to be a great story, Dan, and I can't yeah. wait to learn all about some of the componentry inside the turbocharger. So can you start off with telling our audience about some of the key components inside? So the key component inside the turbocharger is the rotor assembly. The rotor assembly is combined of basically three parts. You've got a turbine on one end, a shaft in the middle, and a compressor wheel on the other. The whole point of a turbocharger is we take exhaust gas in from that end, passes through the turbine, out the top, that spins the whole rotor, which the compressor's on the left-hand side, that's sucking in clean air, pressurised air, then goes to an internal combustion engine. It's purely to get more power from an so engine. So let's start with the turbine yep. end. I mean, some people may refer to the turbine end as a bliss. As a bliss, yeah, yeah, different so terminology. Th this is the dirty end. Yeah, um, exactly. You, can, can you tell us about that particular component? It's made out of your, it's a super alloy because of the environment it's in. Rotation speed's really high, so it's a real volatile area, the area of the dirty end, because it's, it's carbon, well, it's exhaust gas, basically. So it's a real horrible environment. So materials are very difficult to machine. We do all that here, so yeah. Can you mention so, the materials? That, it's that, a grade of Inconel, yeah. So it's a grade of Inconel, so that yeah. is one of the core products within yeah, yeah. The, the turbocharger. Now, yep. the assembly that, that continues from the Blisk um, is, is the shaft, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, we've got the rotor shaft, which then on the opposite end you have the uh, compressor attached to it. And can you explain some of the detail that, that, that goes into manufacturing these parts? We've got all your common uh, machining processes. We do a lot of turning, a lot of grinding, a lot of milling. It's all fairly standard stuff to high tolerances because it's obviously rotating equipment. Now, moving to the front end, yep. we've got the impeller that are made on the, on, on the new Grob machines. Yep. Tell us about this particular component, how important this particular component is um, to the turbocharger. To the finished turbocharger, the impeller is totally imperative. It, it gives you all the performance for the internal combustion engine. So on a, on a machine tool front, we're looking for a powerful machine tool with high accuracy. We want, we're looking for good surface finish, high accuracy. So it's a real critical part. And all of these components could be changed in regards to design at Napier, depending on their applications. Yeah, we, we depending on what the customer wants, we can give different specifications to the drivers. We, you know, we design and test all in Lincoln, so yeah, it's great. And can you just give our audience a little bit of an insight into the kind of design changes and what outcome it would have? I mean, you know, for the Blisk, for example, if you were to change the thickness of the, the fins or the gap between the fins. We, we can change performance to match what the end, the end user of the engine wants. If they want more performance, better efficiency, we can change that from the turbocharger in, in partnership with the customers. Dan, thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. We have a typical impeller that you produce here at Napier Turbochargers. Now, we've gone through the journey with Dan and also Gio about the makeup of some of the products that go into a turbocharger. Now, uh, obviously, they're quite critical, but this big investment that you've had with Grob with the uh, 550 and also the 350, is this a bit of a game changer for you, Matt? It is, yeah. So, the productivity benefits that these machines provide us is astronomical, really. The, the ability to increase our flexibility for both customers and internal um, situations so we now can mill and turn these impellers on one machine so reducing setup we've managed to amalgamate some ops so there's a reduction from nine ops to six ops to to produce these finished components so yeah it's a massive change for us and i suppose this typical um, machine tool obviously that's reducing your tool life as well is it yeah it is yeah and um, while keeping the exact same surface finish that we we currently achieve so 
Brilliant. Uh, and I'm quite amazed because when you look at this technology, now you've been here for four years, you're an apprentice, yeah. and this is your key workstation now, I understand. Now, it is tell now. us a little bit about the journey and the support that you've had in that. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a bit of a, a wild journey, really, a bit thrown into the deep end sort of thing. But yeah, it's been really positive. I've got uh, a very good, very good sort of mentor in, uh, in Dan. Um, and he's, he's sort of taught me taught me everything I know so it's um, yeah it's been been a real eye-opener and yeah I'm loving it and you guys are the future of the business to a certain extent in UK manufacturing in general and I assume that when you're actually making a, such a vast investment as these two machines I presume that you know as your business grows there's potentially automation can be involved as well yeah yeah so these machines are actually um, prep for for pallet changer automation um, so yeah going forward that is definitely an avenue we want to we want to explore um, yeah industry 4.0 and, and all that's obviously a big a big new factor so yeah we're looking forward to that and obviously you're embracing uh, you know the control panels I, I believe you know obviously the guys are giving you you know full training yeah, and, yeah. you know these machines have been in what for six months uh, you know and you're an apprentice and you're working on the top level machines at Napier yeah it's brilliant it's uh, yeah proper proper good experience um, yeah I couldn't be more thankful really so when you look at this investment for the future for Napier turbochargers from your point of view working on this project what is the most unique point to this investment? Definitely the uh, definitely the speed of machining is while maintaining such a such a high accuracy that we we require down to micron level to meet our specifications. Definitely that. And obviously being a horizontal machine, uh, overhead machining, uh, you know, obviously gravity is obviously in, fa <laughs> in favour of, uh, of all that swarf coming off. Uh, and when you when you sum up the whole package of how you're working with the, the control panels, uh, the learning curve and support that you get from Grob, you know, how's that journey been for you? It's been brilliant. Um, when, we've ever, when we've ever had questions or just points that we're not too sure about, Grob have always been happy to help and first, to, first point of call to, to really sort out the issue. Part of manufacturing turbochargers is Napier's training centre. Then this is very important to actually understand to apprentices how things are actually made. As you can see, this is a, an up-to-date turbocharger that you find in a, a marine application or power generation, which is air-cooled. Now, Geo is looking at the older turbochargers. These were actually cooled by water, which is quite a big difference, isn't it? Absolutely. So we're starting off on some of the older generation uh, turbochargers and, and, and like you alluded to this is cooled by water and as we move on and go down the chain we, we, we've got different versions in different sizes this is a different one uh, a later model still cooled by water but with four inlets instead of two and then we move on to the third one the latest one which is actually cooled by air we've also learned about all of the internal features the blisk the impeller the shaft, all the mechanisms that make these turbochargers work. They go up to 36,000 RPM. This is the baby and this weighs 1,000 kg. And when you look at some of the um, areas that these are actually used in, in the marine sector, like I've said, and also power generation, to have 36,000 RPM going through these, they are critical parts and, and that's really why Napier have to invest in the best equipment and the best people available. Lewis, I think we've been quite privileged to actually understand how a turbocharger has made the components within it from Napier. It's been quite a big learning curve uh, for me and Geo, but you know, from your perspective, uh, Grob machine tools are at the top of their game when it comes to uh, machining excellence. Um, what I really want to know is, from your point of view, the journey. Yes, Mark, it started two years ago nearly. Uh, Napier came to us with a problem. They were happy with the quality of their parts, but they had a problem with cycle time. Grob, what can you do for us? We did a desktop study. We proved to them that we could manufacture the parts a lot quicker than they could using their existing uh, equipment. Uh, we then proved that out with an actual test cut. Uh, and now, here we are now, delivering two machines into their production facility. Uh, and they're very happy, I believe, with, with the results that they're getting. 
Well, talking to the guys today is that it's remarkable that you can actually offer them a milling and turning application. Obviously, a very rigid machine, horizontal spindle, but also overhead machine is key to these guys, isn't it? Of course, yeah. It's it's a product with a high volume aluminium removal. So the quicker you can get those chips away, the quicker you get the heat away from the pass, the better your process will be. And I suppose with uh, the excellence that you've got from Germany at the TAS Center, you know, a lot of the companies that are coming to you from very, very different sectors to work where your key areas have been, it's all about proving the job first. Yes, we, we, we're open to a challenge. We've got applications engineers in the UK, we've got machines in the UK which we can utilize to do uh, standard test cuts, specialized test cuts for customers. We've got, as you mentioned, the TAS Center in Germany to utilize as well. Uh, so we're up for the challenge and we want customers to come and ask us what we can do for them. And also talking to Napier, you know, future proofing their, their business longer term. You know, I can see uh, uh, maybe other machines, but maybe before that automation coming here. Correct. The, the next step is to automate these two machines. We delivered them with automation in mind, so they are prepared for that. Uh, and then, yes, potentially new machines uh, coming in later in the year. And from Grob UK's point of view, for any engineers that are facing challenging machining uh, difficulties, they say, what's your message to them, Lewis? Come and talk to us. We've got uh, obviously the range of five axis machines, range of five axis milling and turning machines, uh, range of four axis machines. We've got a value, uh, an access level. Uh, five axis machines with a lower entry point as well so uh, some people do say that grob are expensive but please come and test us we're not as expensive as you think well Gio what a fantastic journey I mean I, I didn't realize how many uh, crucial components are, are actually in a turbocharger but also embracing new technology with the grob machines both milling and turning the application has actually worked for these guys and I can see them really benefiting longer term what have you learned I've learned a lot, Mark. I mean, it's, it's been a fascinating visit. Some of the co internal componentry of these turbochargers is, is fascinating. And, and we've got the impeller inside there that you can just, just make out there that is being made on, on the grobs and, and how it's transformed production um, and, you know, effectively reducing cost per part for such a huge company like this. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed the show um, and, you know, really taking you through a journey of, uh, you know, how these wonderful turbochargers are actually made and what we normally say, but we're going to change it today, keep those impellers, impellers turning. turning.